can I ask the audience am I the contestant they dread are they screaming at their TV screen knowing I should quit while I'm Hey everybody, I'm Bennett Shear. Welcome to American Idol Unaired. I'm here with another singer that you didn't see on season 22 of Idol, Isla Amiri. How you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I've been relaxing a lot. I've been working on a lot of music. I'm, I've got the luxury of being in a gap year right now. So my my responsibilities are pretty low and I'm, I've got a lot of time to just devote to music and to recharging before I start up school again. Why don't you tell everybody what you've been up to because you you definitely deserve a break. Yeah, so um, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. I grew up in Santa Monica, um, and then I stayed here until I went to college at Duke University for four years, and I graduated with my um, major in public policy studies in May of 2023. And so I've just been taking this gap year. I, I spent a lot of the summer and, and early like winter and the fall pretty much just all doing a lot of law school prep because I applied this year and I'm attending. I'm starting my first year in August. Um, so I spent a lot of time taking the LSAT, studying for the LSAT, writing all my applications, writing essays. And then in the middle of all that, I, I also did the funny little thing of auditioning for American Idol just because I knew that if, if not now, then when. Um, and so I did that that journey was obviously shorter than i would have wanted it to be but also also just really amazing and and i don't regret a thing and i absolutely think back on it with a smile on my face and then um since then i've just been you know just on my my personal self-care journey just yes. recharging a lot more and then yeah i've been in studio sessions just trying to get as much stuff recorded and and produced as possible before i have very little time to focus on music in, in law school but yeah that's what i've been up to how do the producers and judges take everything you've accomplished which for one thing, congratulations, because before we talked about how it's gotten televised and turned into a story, I just want to acknowledge how amazing you are and that it's awesome that you've done all that and are pursuing so many great things. But so how does that then get translated into, I'm sure they're going, ooh, there's a story, right? Yeah, no, so that was my, my pitch to them when I kind of just did the open call audition was kind of like, I'm just taking a leap of faith. I have this really like sturdy, steady career in front of me, but like, this has always been a passion of mine. And so it's something that, again, like if not now, then when, and they liked the fact that I was a very like academically oriented person with this like artsy side, that's a lot less defined. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I also, I caught a glimpse of, um, they they really wanted to paint me as like the the girl about to go to law school um mm -hmm. and taking her big chance on idol um and i saw on one of their papers when they pulled me for my audition and they had kind of my info on standby that they it was like my picture and then my name and then it said duke law school smarty <laughs> so i thought that, that was funny but then again that's like kind of what i pitched them i really didn't care to get into a lot of um like personal hardship or whatever as my story i wanted to just keep it um light-hearted and not really go into that just because that's something that i prefer not to have be on national tv so i figured it was fun they had me um specifically send in like media and like photos and stuff um from my childhood that highlighted academic achievement um, and when they found out I could solve a Rubik's cube pretty fast, they had me bring two and then they had me race Ryan Seacrest before my audition. <laughs> so they had a lot of fun stuff planned, but, um, yeah. and they kept the thing that I found interesting is that they kept kind of, um, pushing in, like when they interviewed me with asking me leading questions and just having me talk about it, they kept pushing like, what if you do really well on this show? Are you gonna say goodbye to law school? And they kept, it felt like they didn't fully believe me when I was like, <laughs> I still wanna do law. Like I'm, I'm passionate about both. I'm not really like itching to have something crazy happen in music so I don't have to go to law school anymore. Like it's something I'm genuinely looking forward to. Um, but yeah, I think they, I th think they were a little confused by that, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun story, but apparently not, not as fun to be put on TV, but you know, it happens. 
first laughed when you said Duke Law School Smarty because I think when I <laughs> when I see the judges, you know, flipping through their papers and like it says here, I imagine more of like a a sophisticated paragraph about the background and it's like oh we're gonna boil yeah. it down to like <laughs> something really the, is, like a kid would a... write it in a comment on youtube yeah they give you a headline they really do <laughs> it says here you're a duke law school smarty <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean um, the judges were entertained too i think uh, I, I mean between my audition and my i got three yeses so i made it to hollywood but between the audition in Hollywood week round one, I don't think they like, I don't think it stuck, but in my audition initially, like, I don't think they remembered that part of it. So they didn't really talk about it. But, um, in my audition that Luke was like, you know, what's really good about you is <laughs> that like you play an instrument and you're smart and you went to this great school and you, you know who you are as an artist and you, you've kind of, you're using all of that to form like a really strategic, but like well put together package. Um, and it shows. And so I think, I think they had a respect for it. I think the judges were, um, impressed, which is cool. What was your audition song choice? I sang try by pink. Funnily enough, before auditions, somehow found out through like this mutual friend I had on TikTok that we just followed each other because we both respected each other's music and, and artistry and stuff. He posted something on his like close friend story of like, I'm going to LA in a few weeks. And I DM'd him and I was like, is this what I think it is? Are we doing the same thing right now? Mm -hmm. And so when we found out that we were both auditioning, we did a lot of back and this is Zay Romeo. I love mm -hmm. him. He also was on the season and unaired. You should totally check him out. Yeah. But we did a lot of before the audition, sending arrangements to each other and giving each other notes and kind of workshopping it together, which I genuinely like I give him a lot of credit for helping me get a golden ticket mm. um, because he helped me get the song to where where it ended up. And, and that ultimately was what impressed the judges. I think Lionel specifically, I, if, I think I remember him saying, like, I love what you did with the song. And it really sh shown through like what, who you are as an artist and what you can bring to the table. Katy Perry gave me a standing ovation, which was crazy. I also like when I was singing the song, I, this has never happened to me before, but I played piano with, I accompany myself on piano and I was shaking so much and it was, it's usually in my hands, mm -hmm. but this time it was in my legs Interesting. and they could literally, I was wearing jeans with like a frayed bottom and they were pointing it out being like the phrase swaying back and forth that you're shaking so much but i i felt good because i i kept the shaking in my legs and not in my voice um i think the katie said something along the lines of the beginning felt like you were you know getting the dust off the engine kind of getting it going but not fully there yet but once you got to the chorus and it really opened up and you hit this big like where there is this or whatever like that was something that it really opened up and it's really listenable and it's very like like you've got a grade a instrument there and then lionel he said something really great about for a lot of people it's a hail mary and you throw everything at the wall and you see what sticks and like in this industry and whatever but for you it's not a hail mary mm -hmm. for you you just need people to listen and mm -hmm. and they'll like what they hear and they'll support it um, and then Luke talked about the whole package and the, and the Duke stuff and the, all of that. But then they had a cute moment where they went down the line and Luke and Katie both said yes. And then I got to Lionel and he's like, man, I love you guys. Like we're so on the same page today. Like some days we clash, but right now we're in it. Like you got three yeses, you're going to Hollywood. Um, and that was really nice. Uh, should we do, do you want me to talk about um yeah. hollywood oh, let's do it i ended up going on the stage I, when they called me up i was freaking out it was right after we had had a break and so i kind of had some time to calm myself down a bit and not get too much in my head they called me up um and i sang an original for round one hollywood week i was freaking out a bit because they were being very vague about whether or not the duets round was happening. And they said they were making the biggest cuts of the season and that like over half of us would be gone and all of this stuff, but they didn't fully specify like that duets weren't happening. And I kind of had tried to be strategic of how much of my voice I keep showing and how how much I give and still trying to do stuff that impresses people, but something that I can still top for next time. And so I was banking on 
my songwriting to kind of carry me through a bit with a song that like had a good moment and had a big belt and all that stuff, but still saved something to be shown for later. And I think that was part of my mistake of trying to ration mm-hmm. um, how much I showed off. But, and so I was freaking out before I went on. I was qu- asking myself like, is this enough? Should I have picked something that gave more? Um, and so I went on, explained what the song was, um, what it was about. Lionel seemed very intrigued. It was a song called Street Signs. And it was about this like road trip game that I played um, on the way to Myrtle Beach in North Carolina with with someone that I was seeing at the time about like going through the alphabet with words on road signs, like street oh, signs. Cool. And whoever made it to Z first wins. Mm-hmm. Um, and how I'm supposed to be over this person by now because <laughs> um, like we've graduated and moved apart and whatever. But like sometimes when I'm on the highway and I'm seeing a street sign that has a word that starts with the letter A in it, I think to myself like, oh, we could start the game now. And then I immediately start thinking about the person again. And so it's all about like, I shouldn't be thinking of Myrtle Beach when I'm on the way to Malibu. Like that's the mm. line in the song. And so I explained it i sang the song lionel gave me a standing ovation that time and then there was only one judge assigned to give you comments and that was katie for me and she asked me like when did you write this song and i was like back in may like right after i had graduated graduated and she was like oh so before you realized that you were gonna be on the show and i said yes and she started explaining usually when someone picks to sing an original song they kind of have to choose between do I want to showcase my range or my artistry and usually something suffers especially if you didn't write this song with the purpose of singing it on the show to show off but that song had a lot of range and it showed your artistry so like congrats on picking the right song and when she said that I was like thank god (laughs) because even if I get eliminated like I know that I like I can at least sleep at night knowing that I picked a, I picked a good song. Like I didn't, sh- I didn't fully shoot myself in the foot. They tried to get a little bite, like a little clip of like, does this person know they have a song about them? <laughs> and then I was like, yes, actually, <laughs> like they've heard it, they like it. But she wanted to be like, well, they definitely know <laughs> now. And it just didn't happen that way. But um, yeah, so then she and then she ended up with saying like I, you swung and I think you hit very far my dear. And I was like there's hope. <laughs> I was like I hit far. There's hope. And then I walked off the stage. I felt really good. Um they pulled me for some interviews and then they brought me back. I watched everyone else and then um and then we had I went on the second day. So after that finished, we got our results. And I kind of knew by just the distribution of the group I was in for um, results that I was in the no group. And I also was victim of the fake out (laughs) of Katy Perry being like, congratulations, all of you. And I genuinely, and I'm so mad they didn't include this in the edit. I gasped and leaned forward. I was like, Uh (laughs) Like, there's a chance. And then she paused dramatically. And then she said, for making it this far in the competition, like, stage right group, you're going home, your journey ends Mm. here. And I was like, well, shit. (laughs) It's fun while it lasted. And the thing that made me, like, hurt the most, it wasn't even like that my idol journey was over. It's just that they really shuttled people away very fast. We didn't really get much time with the people who did make it through the friends that we made. Like this is a very intense experience and you make really good friends in a really short amount of time. And just to be like pulled away and shuttled back to the hotel, go pack so you can be taken to um, the other hotel closer to the airport where you fly out tomorrow. And so it was a lot of like, just say your goodbyes, like waving and not really getting a chance to hug people goodbye and then just leave. Mm. Luckily for me, like I live here. And so I didn't there, I didn't have to be out by the time the shuttle left. Like I could take my time because I had my brother just like picking me up and taking me home. Um, But that was the hardest part of like it being so intensive and so every second of every day while you're there and then it being over really fast. Also, another thing of idol makes you really motivated because you're surrounded by such talented people 
you have to kind of up your game. And even when you leave it, there's still that motivation of like, I need to just grind. I need to Mm. do everything. I need to work on my music and make myself the best musician I can be. Um, And so the writing took a a bit to get started again, but I got into studio sessions of stuff that I'd already written and starting to produce those like pretty fast. And that's kind of been the main thing I'm really putting my energy to towards now that it's all over. And there's also the looming thing of like first year law school is known to really take a toll and and take up all of your free time. And so knowing that I am approaching a time where although it's like a labor of love, I'm not going to really have that much free time to spend on things. It's really motivating me to use the free time I have now to like its greatest potential. So, yeah, that's kind of been where I've been at since since Idol ended for me. I am very excited to hear you sing. Want me to play it now? Oh, yeah. This is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I hope you guys like it. Who wants to be a millionaire? All I'd want to buy is your love. But even if I give my all without the same from you, it's not enough. So can I use a lifeline can I phone a friend cause it's easier for me to hear someone else say that it's the end cause I've never been the one to call it never been the one to pull the plug gonna have to drag me out duct tape mouth muffled shouts before I give up on us that's my problem always playing games I'll never win oh I'm breaking ribs caving in bruising any remnants of what could have been love the sin or not the sin can I get a 50-50 can you tell me the odds I'll jump off of any cliff if you tell me I'll survive the fall. Can I ask the audience? Am I the contestant they dread? Are they screaming at their TV screen, knowing I should quit while I'm ahead? Cause I've never been the one to call it, never been the one to pull. shouts before I give up on us and maybe that's my problem always playing games I'll never win oh I'm breaking ribs caving in bruising any remnants of what could have been love the sin or hate the endless pining always bad timing betting on a future with no silver lining Oh, can't you just quit it? The crowd's getting livid. Producers say this can't go on one more minute. So cut to commercial. This couldn't be worse. So how did I not burst the flames in rehearsal? We're back on in five. Gotta think I might die. But I stay even though there's no hope. Cause I've never been the one to call it. Never been the one to pull the plug Gonna have to drag me out Duct tape, mouth muffled shouts Before I give up on us Us And maybe that's my problem Always playing games I'll never win Oh, I'm breaking ribs Caving and bruising Any remnants of what could have been I hate the sin That's an amazing song. Thank you. I appreciate it. It really, really is. 
Thank you. And it's something I never would have written if I hadn't been on the show. I like I can say that with full confidence. I wouldn't have come up with that if I hadn't, you know, like been on a stage and behind cameras and the producers and the crowds getting lit, like all that stuff, like never would have come to my mind if I hadn't been on the show and been in that mindset. So like there's good to come out of everything and there's so much to make of it. And I'm just really grateful for having been on the show and for them taking a chance on me. Like this was, I like I know a lot of people audition a million times and like it's it takes like their sixth try in the open call to make it to the actual audition. And so the fact that I kind of just took a leap and made it on the first try and that the producers and that the the judges and everyone was willing to take a chance on me and kind of help me in that was really meaningful. And it, and it honestly, like it, it reassured me, like I do have something special and I do have something cool to offer and I'm, and I'm on the right path with it. And so that's, just, it's just been a super like affirming and, and validating and rewarding experience. And I'm, I'm, I'm reaping the benefits with it and in, in my songwriting too, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, and also thank you for taking the time to like showcase the people who don't get the airtime and don't get the like big national TV moment because there are so many people. It, it, it's ridiculous and also being on the inside of it and having been in the crowd and having watched all 140 some people in Hollywood week and getting to like see it for ourselves. It's crazy how much talent that as someone who watched the show when I was younger that I wasn't even aware was being missed out on. That's been the most frustrating thing, watching the season back and seeing what they choose to show. Like, again, they have only good options. Like, everyone's incredible. But to see that such crazy good performances are, like, only going to be in my memory and not and in some, like, flash drive of all their footage or whatever and not for America to see, it's just so it's hard to come to terms with and it's ridiculous. And so I'm glad that there's a podcast like this that like gives the things that weren't shown a chance to shine and give the, give the artists that weren't given their moment in the spotlight to really just like get to talk about their experiences and, and show how talented they are. Cause there's so much talent that doesn't get shown. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. So thank you. Uh, thank you. There's so much talent. It's my absolute pleasure. Um, question for you. Yes. How would you feel about playing street signs? Oh, I, w I have to retune my guitar, but I would love to. Cool. Okay. I think of you every time I'm on a highway And the silly game you taught me how to play And we kissed at every red light We didn't need the help to pass the time But you knew that I loved myself A good road trip game Beginner's luck when I won the first time around. And I'm pretty sure you let me win. You offered up your crown. And I thought about playing again back home with some of my new friends. But I like the idea of it staying out. But I hate the reminder that I'm no closer to over you. I shouldn't be thinking. And I think of you every time I'm asked the question Have you ever said I love you and not meant it? And I always say that it's reversed It's embarrassing how much I've rehearsed those
try, I feel closer to you the further that I drive. Wow, you're very talented and Thank special. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. Where do we need to go to stream? Okay, so I've got um I've got a I've got three songs on Spotify and on like all the streaming platforms. Um there's Crown, <laughs> which um, is only still up there because my friends won't let me take it down. I it's it's very much first song ever put out like vibe. I had my friend Aria from like first grade, one of my best friends, um, who's like crazy talented violinist and pianist and like everything. He makes his own music too. Um, but I had him record some strings, like live strings, and then send it over. And we just literally took piano my vocal some background vocals and then that like the strings and then just called it a day and then put it out um i love the song i think it's great writing and stuff my main gripe with it is just like i feel like the production and stuff like there was a lot of missed potential there that if we just spent more time on it and if i maybe worked with like an actual producer it would have <laughs> been cool um and that so that's something i've been meaning to like revisit eventually down the line and then there's break someone new which is my which was my attempt at being angry instead of sad in a song and that one the production is amped up i like kind of learned my lesson from crown i i think I, it's a great song i love it um but my pride and joy is the third one it's called to the girl i used to know i worked on it with mickey ratsula who's a super talented producer and also singer songwriter of their own right um, that I'd been listening to for years and somehow I managed to network my way to working with them and, you know, like being friends with them. Um, and that was like a lot of just like a letter to my inner child and and my like previous younger self and, and kind of just saying like, it's you're going to be good, like you're going to be OK. Um, you know, you're you don't have too much to worry about, like you've got a, a bright and happy future ahead of you. Um, and as far as other songs, very much in progress. I'm trying to get stuff out as soon as possible, but then again, I'm also a perfectionist and my biggest critic. So I, I, I try not to do that until I'm like genuinely so happy with it, but that usually takes a minute for me. So um, be on the lookout, there's stuff to come. Until then, like I've got stuff on my TikTok and my Instagram, it's all at I-L-A-M as in Mary, I-R-I. -I. Um, that's like all of my socials across the board. Um, and I post clips of like live performances or I post um, like just TikToks of me sitting on my couch, like filming myself, singing my songs. So like if you want more recent stuff that just isn't out yet, definitely check that out. Well, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm going to go get off and listen to your music because I'm feeling really, really inspired. <laughs> I love doing this podcast. I love Thank you so discovering much. the music the world. and uh, meeting people like you that are just so talented. So uh, you guys can follow us at Idle Unaired Podcast. You can follow me at TV Music Guy. Um, you know what? I'm distracted because I was thinking about how good that song was. You probably already said where they can follow you, but we'll use that to the benefit and you can plug your socials again. You just said okay. Emma's and Mary. You said it. I'm ADD. Emma's so and Mary. whatever. It's my but name, like my full name, but only one A in the middle. I thought I was really clever in middle school when I made it, but uh -huh. <laughs> it's just stuck. Um, so I L A M I R I at Isla Miri um, on all my plat on my socials. I don't use Facebook. I don't, I'm sorry if you do. I have like maybe one graduation post from high school on there. Right. But my Instagram and my TikTok, I'm pretty active on. So, you know, give those, a ch uh, just go check those out and you'll find the more recent stuff for sure. I want to get my Spotify and all my streaming stuff to a place where like, if people go and listen to it and that's the only songs they ever hear from me that they are obsessed. Currently, I'm not there myself yet with my uh -huh. Spotify, and I feel like I have to give a disclaimer every time that, like, I love those songs. They're not my best. I'm very excited to put my best out there because you just heard it, <laughs> um, and I'm super excited for it. So just hold out if you're not exactly sold yet, please. But, yeah, that's, well, that's me. Thank you for taking the time to play it on this podcast. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks for having me. In general. Isla, thank you so much. And thanks, guys, for watching or listening. This has been American Idol Unaired.